Over the last few weeks, I've been getting up close to death. I've travelled from convention halls in Las Vegas to death cafes in Exeter on a mission to understand mortality. I've always been terrified of dying, and that anxiety was the reason this series began. But the people I've met have helped me start to see it differently. In this final episode, there's one more perspective I want to hear. I'm meeting someone who is facing death much sooner than he expected. You don't feel like I'm someone who's about to die because that's so mad. Today I'm meeting a guy called Joe. Um, Joe is only a little bit older than me. He's 34 and he's been diagnosed with a terminal illness. How are you feeling about it? Um, I'm looking forward to meeting him. I've often imagined what it must be like to be diagnosed with a terminal illness when you're young, but I've never actually spoken to anyone that that's happened to. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting. Doctors told Joe he had one year to live. Can I just see? Yes, please. Almost two years ago. So that is a table full of drugs. <laughs> yeah, not fun kind. Um, mm -hmm. It becomes part of the day of the scene. And mm -hmm. after a while, it is that. What kind of cancer were you diagnosed with? It's oral cancer. Um, so what happened, it was... Um, in December 2016, uh, I started having a lot of pain in my tongue. I had to have near all of my tongue cut off. It was just so fast. And the EA is in a phone into this situation. And they had no time to process it. And they told you that you had a year. Yeah. It's, it, it's bad. I'm probably not going to be an old man. After you've kind of been given a prognosis like that and all of this information, how do you... What do you do next? Like, how do you actually deal with that in your mind? Yes, I need to put out the world and she said, well, what next? Mm. There's no one there to hold your hands and help you through it. Yeah. Um, but I was referred uh, by my GP to, um, to a hospice. Jo comes to St Christopher's Hospice every week. It's a space away from the medical, where they're helping him reckon with the big questions his illness has brought up. Hey. Hi, Joe. Right. So much as having cancer, it's, it's a mental battle. That aspect of it is stuff that you can't do with, with a good hospital. See what comes out today? It's not drugs, it's not pills, it's not chemotherapy. It's, you know, it's, it's your life. What are the things that have been most difficult to come to terms with? I'm a bit of a control freak and everything in my life, like, yeah, I like to control everything. And cats is something that I have no control over. It's bigger than me and, and I have to deal with it, but I can't control it. Joe's diagnosis has forced him to face a new reality. He takes me to the place he came to wrestle with the idea that he was dying. So have you been coming up here for a long time? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's one of my regular walks I see. But mm. Yeah, it's been, well, this year has been um, the first time I've uh, started to actually like, feel the pain and like, been feel the cancer. Something about being here helps you process stuff. That yeah. It's quite tough. Why is it difficult to process? Because cancer is such an abstract thing. Mm. It isn't like what it actually is, you know, it's, it's like, what, what is cancer? You make up in your, your view, you know. So, connecting what has been told to how you feel at that moment and you know, what you're doing, um, it's hard, it's, mm. it's weird. Um, is having this diagnosis and being ill what you would have imagined it's like? Because people imagine it would be... Yeah, not at all. The worst thing in the world. Not at all. I've always been a bit obsessed with death. Um, I had a, a healthy obsession, as we say. And so this is a scenario I've run my head 
it's is fine, it? It's fine, it's fine again. And every time I've run it from the head, it's always me in the corner. Just being completely besoys and useless. And, and the last is, it's nothing like that at all. Um, nothing like that. Um, it's, uh, the weird thing is, actually, is, is it suddenly is, is so real life. Um, there's you know, darkness and sadness and fear and everything else. But there's things that have been untouchable. Mm. You know, like the, all the stuff that used to bother you doesn't bother you anymore. None of it matters. The world suddenly felt like it was in her. Mm. So it felt brighter and more powerful. And I'm really interested in the kind of good bits. Yeah. Because yeah, I'm also somebody who's imagined that moment yeah. a lot and, th and imagined it in the, it being horrible. Life goes on and has like a very really good year and a fun year. Mm. Um, and that's the reassuring thing is that the idea of death is terrifying. And seriously, the idea is the same thing. The reality day to day it's not so, and you just accept it. It's, it's, it's a final thing. Um, how about how people around you have dealt with it? I think it's a lot harder for people around you. Like with the reason my wife, I think she has the hardest job, and for her, to what to watch the loved one go through that I was ill, and I think that's that's the real sadness. Mm. I think I think the 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 hardest bit about a sort of like this is being around the person who has it. Um, I'm witnessing them. Um, that is a whole different story. Nice to meet you. How um, how did you two meet? I used to run with my friend. Um, <laughs> uh -huh. uh, something like she came in to play violin at the start of it. It's night. Like, and yeah, he plays um, the ends by the doors on violin. And I said, yeah. And we've been married for three, three and a half years. Mm -hmm. We were married just before my diagnosis. Yeah, six months before wow. the diagnosis, yeah. Yeah, I got in there. You just, got in there just, just in time. time. <laughs> Otherwise, I could run away. Yeah, it's, Lock it's, it's, it's down. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, no getting out now. How has this kind of changed how you think about what you guys were planning for? Or what kind of. Ooh. So, a year after Joe's initial diagnosis, we found out that um, the cancer had spread. And we stood on London Bridge and uh, gave me a hug and said, uh, I'm really sorry. I thought I was really looking forward to us getting old together and I will always remember it yeah and um, I think because Joe's we're both young um, and when life is cut short in that way it's it's not just the life that you're losing it's the future of that person which mm. is one of the things that I find very hard um, to think about mm. um, I take each day as it comes take each hour sometimes even just the next five minutes just see what happens and try not to think too much about what's going to happen then, because we just don't know. Now that Joe's aware of how precious his time is, oh, you really? yeah, hi, yeah. he's surrounding himself with the people he loves yeah, whenever he can. Joe's one of the first people I met at uni. Yeah. Her freshers week, so yeah. yeah, we've been firm friends ever since. Fine, fine. I. Sneeze in five years past. Yeah, that's a rubbish superpower to have. Yeah. <laughs> Sneezing and losing time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is photos. My wife yeah. is a kind of obsessed archivist of photos. That's great. It's I'm quite a rare, a rare thing. Is Joe in water? Thank you. Yeah, I, I don't do water. You don't do water. No, we, we went on a holiday before that. We didn't realise quite how badly he couldn't swim. <laughs> And we encouraged him, as friends do, to jump off a bridge into the water like the rest of us had. It was only when he started floating off we realised how serious he was. Face changes, uh, head on with a smile. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty stupid. <laughs> do you remember Gladiators? Yes. So this was us playing 
hang tough on the circle line. Now that was a great man. Well, that's the thing. Oh, and that's the Canterbury Beer Festival. There's a theme emerging, isn't there? <laughs> that was a good day. How did you guys both react when you heard that Joe had cancer? I still haven't taken it in. In terms of ex accepting that there's a that there's a finality to this, you know, I think I'm still working on that. To be fair, mm. so. We all kind of live in a bubble where we think we're indestructible until something like this happens. Has it given you any new sort of perspectives? You become aware of time, it's not an infinite resource. It definitely throws things in a sharper relief, doesn't it? Like, mm. they'd be grateful for. When bad things happen, it brings people together. Yeah. I think rude perspective about the randomness of life, I think, it was maybe something I hadn't quite appreciated before. I don't think that is. I'm, I'm just very happy, actually. Uh, I really am very, very, very happy. Uh, it sounds like a bit of a bladder cancer, but, uh, but I have. I, 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 I do consider myself a fairly happy person. Before we started this series, I would have thought that a situation like Joe's would be almost impossible to deal with. But the people that I've met over the last few weeks have made me see it differently. I've been surprised over and over again by how people can be faced with their own death, something that's inconceivably scary, and just kind of deal with it. Um, that doesn't mean that it isn't frightening and that it isn't very sad, but I think we often do find we have the resources to cope. It might be through friends, it might be through spirituality, it might be through being practical or just accepting it, but I think that people are often more resilient than they might have expected. In terms of your anxiety? Um, it's actually genuinely got better and I don't think I necessarily expected that. I think that when you have death anxiety, often one of the things that you can get stuck on is the fact that you can't know when and how you're gonna die and you can't control it. And I think that doing this has, has made me understand that. That lack of control can, rather than being a source of anxiety, actually be a relief. So this was the last episode, um, but next week we're going to do a quick recap of the series. I'm going to have a look through the feedback and respond to some of the comments that you guys have left. So see you next week. <laughs>